All righty, guys, look. No jacket. Minus 22, but with that guy shining bright. And look at the trees close. No movement on the trees of any kind. It's actually a beautiful day. The cows are all fed. Calves are all fed. Everybody's fed. Chores are all done. Now for the one part of firemen that I totally hate. Paperwork. I ate it with a passion. The Sass Power Boys have been out here since roughly 8.30. Well, we'll take a peek at them guys here real quick. I'm not sure if they're working hard or hardly working, but they're doing something. Get ready, boys. You're on YouTube, so you better do it right. <laughs> they left me a bunch of freaking frozen clumps of dirt. You need her for anything? <laughs> you found some rocks, too, it looks like. This whole place is full of rocks. Thank you. Welcome to my world. You have no idea. <laughs> that big green box you guys just installed, that doesn't even come close to some of the rocks I've pulled out of the ground. Mm, so, but yeah, that's what's coming into here. This thing will be coming out. Fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. We'll catch you guys later. Alrighty, guys. Well, it's been a one of them days of feeding cows, then paperwork, then bedding cows, and screwing with water bowl, and <coughs> just all kinds of stuff. And then SAS Power, or these guys, I won't necessarily say SAS Power, but these guys anyways. The pole is gone. No more cables to worry about. That's always nice. No more guide wires. Most of the pole is gone. The the part the bottom half bottom quarter part of the pole is still in the ground. Uh, the meter box that we had, they're just reusing it, and from what I understand, which is fine, so the power line from that pole, the old line, to that pole down there, so now the power line is uh, hanging over there, or they cut it off, one or the other. So yeah, they'll be pulling poles here pretty darn quick. Anywho, that's, that job is done. I won't have to worry about these guys coming around too often anymore. And I'm sure I'll have something to bitch about after they're gone because of the frozen dirt lumps. I'll be harrowing them around or moving that dirt around. Anyway, I'm going to jump on the skid steer and move some snow for an hour or so. And then uh, it'll be back to doing more choring. Talk to you guys later. Alrighty guys. Well, finally just got these girls all locked in here. It's not that it's super cold, but just in case, right? Right, girl? Just in case. Better to be safe than sorry. And, yes, 
there's still lots of room for them to lay down, stretch out, have a baby if that's what they plan on doing. Oh, somebody shit on the side of you. Like that one, she's her udder's getting not overly big. These girls don't get super big uttered, but it's kind of tight, the udder. You got shit on too. Somebody didn't like you. They said, I want to shit on you, and they did. They weren't lying. They should all utter a little bit more, I think, but anyways, it's their first night that I've been locking them up. There's a few of them that aren't going to cab for a while, but there's quite a few of them that are starting to show pretty good. And like I said, I would rather be safe than sorry. Not that I come out here in the morning or in the middle of the night and find a, find a calf in the snowbank. Okay. I'm going to hook this up and I'll bring you guys back here in a minute. Okay, so we're back. And this girl, Orange 29, she calved here about 5.30, 6 o'clock. It's like 7.30 right now. She wasn't a surprise. We were watching her all day. Uh, she was acting a little bit off this morning, and uh, then this afternoon, there at 4 o'clock, oh shit, excuse me, I said to CP, yep, she's definitely going to calve, let's put her in the main part of the barn, and uh, there it is, nice black little, black little heifer calf. Now, has she been on? I'm not sure. She's got two teats that are low. And then she's got two teats that are super fucking high. And I'm not sure if she fully cleaned. If she did clean, she ate it. Calf was bouncing around. CP was here at 6, quarter after 6. Oh, kind of a stretch. Kind of a stretch. So, yeah, I'm going to guess that... Baby sucked already. It's about 10 degrees here in the barn. So I'm not too, too worried. About a 75, maybe an 80 pounder. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. Calf number one is on the ground, May 5. We'll talk to you all later. Alrighty guys, it is, uh, I don't know, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, something like that. <gasps> this little girl is doing fine. She might lose the outside edge of her ears just a little bit. Maybe I should have put her in the warmer box for an hour or so last night, but I never. But other than that, she's doing fine. No other babies of any kind. And, yeah, you get her all cleaned out and it starts snowing again. But, with that being said, this big feeder that's with these girls here, I want to pull it out of there and put it in the calving corral for those bigger girls. The feeder that's in there, I don't even know if I'm going to put a feeder in here. Because they get cut feed also. They don't necessarily need a round bale. Not at this point anyways. So I may use that feeder for a different corral altogether later on. 
but I'm gonna move some stuff around and yeah it's actually it's snowing pretty good uh, so we're gonna get busy with doing that and these girls their alleyway got all scraped out yesterday really nice or day before whenever the hell that was so I want to freshen them up with a bunch of fresh cut feed and then we can top dress that with the with their grains so I guess let's get after it right talk to y'all later Mocha dog was gonna stick her head inside here and she, oh shit, there's still a couple to come out. There she is now. So I brought the hay saver feeder in, cradled hay saver, so they don't make a mess of it so bad. But the hay that was in the bottom, in the ring of the last one, I grabbed it and I kind of spread it around over here. They'll eat some of it and then they'll rummage in it and sleep on it and lay down so on and so forth the feeder that was with the calves well that's that one right there actually now but in the bottom of that feeder the little bit that was there i was able to reach over the top with the grapple and i grappled the little bit that was there and i brought it over here too so realistically it's not even a full grapple full bucket load of hay that was more or less wasted so not bad but this way they can freaking lay down on that stuff they'll fight around and wrestle around in it and they'll eat some of it and blah 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 it won't all go to waste we'll make use of her Now to close this. There we go. It is cool this morning. With wind chill, it's like uh, minus 28 minus 29 something like that so that little bit of snow that we got this morning and that's still coming down I got snow cover on the ground here so I'm gonna scrape that out get rid of it because I hate putting fresh cut feed on top of snow ground in a fence line feed area so we're just gonna do a quick scraping of this stuff and uh, then we'll bring these guys some fresh stuff and those guys right there these bully woolies they're looking for their good morning breakfast grain <laughs> they're getting a five gallon pail of grain twice a day between the five of those boys and they're making them one hell of a mess of that bale that we brought them the other day okay I'm gonna scrape this up and I'm gonna bring you guys back a little bit later I got a couple things I want to talk to you all about and lots don't even know about it lots do but I'm sure there's even, for as many that do know about it, I'm sure there's that many more that don't know nothing about it. So we'll bring you back once we get this scraped down. Talk to you then. Alrighty. So, here's one for you. Would you rather? Would you rather live in an area where, like CP and I up here in Canada, or if you're in the States, in the northern states, getting cold weather, calving in cold weather, snow, uh, you got to deal with the potential of frozen babies, 
frozen ears, frozen legs, dead babies because you didn't get out there early enough and they died in the cold, cold weather. Dealing with minus 40 to 50 degree temperatures on average. Um, or would you rather be in the panhandle of Texas? I believe they call it the smokehouse or scissor creek stuff like that like the panhandle of Texas I believe if I remember correctly is they have 85% of all of the cattle in the state right there in the panhandle so the panhandle is kind of the from what I understand the northern part of Texas anyway those poor buggers are burning up they have lost uh, it's like over a million acres throughout the panhandle of Texas it is an enormous friggin raging uh, fire prairie fire the largest on record at this point like it's something else I know for myself, I would rather be here. Now there's, sorry guys, there's, uh, turn you around here, what I'm doing. There's uh, relief aid and stuff going on to help the ranchers and the farmers in the area. They've lost thousands of cattle that have burned in this fire. But there's ones that have livestock that have perished in the fire. But then there's also livestock that did not perish. But they're having to put them down because they're so badly burnt that they'll never recover from it. There's uh, mama cows with babies where the udders are so badly burnt the babies can't nurse because the udders are burnt so badly and there's, yeah. So it's a terrible situation. All the feed, all the grasses, have been burned up a couple of residents in the area have perished in the fire also like there's been people that have passed away in this fire complete ranches and farmyards completely destroyed due to fire I know there's lots of people from all the way all over the US of A sending if they have extra feed, sending bales or uh, sending monies down that way to help purchase feed and get it out to these animals, to the livestock. So if I remember correctly, I saw one news bulletin where a guy, he had something like 800 cows and he lost them all outside of like 15 or 20. Like 15, like to lose your whole goddamn herd. That's pretty friggin' devastating, guys. So, anyways, so yeah. I know for myself, what would I rather? I would rather be right here where we are. Now, if I had the funds, and the ability to send a bunch of bales down to Texas to help them out, I would. If I had the funds to uh, help the people of Alberta out last summer, I would have. That's the problem though, like up here, 
down there, I believe the government has kicked in a little bit, like the state of Texas is trying to help out. But up here, uh, the Alberta government, I believe they were helping out some of the farmers. I don't know how that all shook down last summer. Um, maybe some of our subscribers from Alberta can can correct me or tell us how that all shook down for them last summer. I know as far as our federal government goes, well, that's a friggin' joke right there. That guy doesn't help nobody out unless you're an LGBTQ plus two XYZ type of person. <clears throat> then you can get anything and everything you want. You can even have him. So, and the rest of us, it goes right back to the old saying of milk. The West is the milk cow, and the East is the milk man. And they take the milk and they don't give back. They don't even put give feed to the cow. Milk her till she's dry, and then dump her in a hole someplace that's how we get treated out here with our current state of affairs government <laughs> anyways enough of that being said uh, just going out there again to uh, the state of Texas if you're in the states if you're in the US of A and if you guys have the ability or the extra feed there is uh, apparently some trucking companies that are helping out uh, moving feed down into the tech state of Texas. So, uh, yeah, um, get on there and see what you can find out. And I wish I'd uh, I'd uh, researched this a little bit more and got got a little bit more information and as to who to get a hold of to uh, like where to send the feed if I remember it was uh, the Texas Livestock Commission get a hold of those guys and uh, they're kind of helping out with the relief aid so Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. We're going to continue our feeding, our morning choring here, and uh, we'll talk to you all later. Alrighty, guys. Well, still choring around and stuff, but I heard a noise, and, well, there's Prairie Dog Hydrovac. They pulled into the yard. So where our power pole was, right there, actually, they just cut it off, and they're using it as the pedestal for the metering box. Anyways, that pole was anchored and uh, they got to get the anchors out of the fucking ground so they got Prairie Dog, Steve right there, he's the owner uh, they got him to come out and hydrovac these this out, the frozen ground out of the way so that they can pull the anchors out of the fucking ground but yeah if anybody's out there and you need some hydrovac type work done get a hold of Steve, it's right there 306 812-6900 call the dog it's Prairie Dog Hydrovac right here in the in Regina Sask area and uh, I might even be getting him to come out to do something for me in, in a little while we'll see what happens I haven't decided what I'm going to do for sure but, but yeah sweet anyway I uh, I need to get my butt out to the pasture, grab a couple of those uh, cut feed bunks, and get them back to the yard here for those cows in the windbreak corral. And I think I'm just going to move the windbreaks that are out there home also. And there's CP. She's grabbing some wood for the wood burner in the house. So fun, fun. Lots going on. Talk to you guys later. She's still coming down, guys. It'd be a beautiful day if it wasn't snowing and overcast so bad. They say we were only supposed to get two to four centimeters of snow. 
Well, by this here, we got more than that so far. There's a good two inches worth of snow on top of that freezer and it was completely cleaned right off. CP did have the deck cleaned right off earlier. Mm, so anyway, I gotta go to the barn, do a check. Um, and then I gotta get my butt in the shop, fix a windbreak that I fucked up. It was frozen the ground out in the pasture really bad. And as I was trying to dig it out of the frozen manure, I ripped the one leg completely off of it. So I got to get that welded on. It doesn't matter how good a welder, welder you are, when the back end of your tractor is coming off the ground because it's froze in so bad, uh, yeah, something's got to give. And it's either the tractor brakes or the windbreak breaks. And in this case, the windbreak broke. So I'll get that fixed, do our barn check, so on and so forth. All these little things that gotta get done here now today. So with that, give us the old thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. Gaving season's here. We'll catch you all later.